Now, Will, obviously, the, the, the big subject is Static X, and I'll be seeing you in Brisbane. But um, another thing that I wanted to ask you about is, obviously, you have been playing um, uh, shows with the new singer of Fear, uh, with Fear Factory with your new vocalist. How's that going, man? It's been great, man. The meal is kicking ass. Um, his performances have been killer. Um, you know, the, the audience response has been overwhelmingly positive. So, yeah, it's been awesome. Bit of a different vibe than, than Burton, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, Burton uh, is a seasoned grizzled veteran you know and milo's kind of new at this so you know oh nice man um do you have any are there any plans at the stage to bring uh the fee, um, new fee factory lineup to australia no um like this uh this run we're doing right now is just kind of uh yeah a little unexpected you know like i i really didn't expect to go back to Australia until at least next year. But when we got the offer, uh, you know, we were just like, fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> nice. I, uh, uh, I interviewed you and I interviewed Ken J in 2020. And I, I said to him, it's like, mate, if you ever have doubts about your, get your sex appeal as you get older, just know that <laughs> after your 2019 show, I literally saw a running, street fight outside the Brisbane venue over one of his drumsticks. Uh, <laughs> like literally a girl was chasing a guy's car and kicking it as it left the car park. <laughs> Damn. Harsh. Static X fans, man. Yeah, hey, I gotta love them. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, obviously this tour is marking the... Uh, 20th anniversary or thereabouts of Machine. Um, what do you think this album meant to the band in terms of songwriting and the opportunities that it opened up? Like what, go back to that time. What do you remember most about it? Um, yeah, I mean, Machine, um, it, you know the old saying is that you know you get a, you get your whole life to write your first record and then you get a year to write your second one. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was ha having that that bit of a time crunch was new and different, and uh, actually sitting down to 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 write stuff. We actually wrote some stuff while on tour. And then uh, finished it up at home at the rehearsal space, and then having Ulrich, our producer, come in into the rehearsal space with us and and help us finish stuff off. And we actually did some of the tracking there. Um, yeah, it was, it was a different experience for sure. Uh, Koichi left before you guys started working on this album. How yeah. has it been weird for him to? to go back and, you know, playing these songs when he wasn't really involved in their, in their inception? Uh, he hasn't expressed any apprehension uh, about playing these songs to me. Um, so, and, you know, Quichi's a professional, man. He's, he's, you know, loves all the, all the material. And uh, he, he, you can plainly see as he's playing, he's having a blast. <laughs> um. I'm loving the fact that uh, you you obviously run the, the Static X um, social media accounts, and I'm always loving the fact that you're very very passionate about engaging with fans. Um, you know, most people that you know very hands off that maybe have someone else handling it. You're there, you know, dealing, you know, headbutting with trolls to a point where I'm like, Jesus, Tony, just just let it go like this. <laughs> Well, it, 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 it's not, it's not all me, but, uh, yeah, I'm on there, you know? <laughs> I do like whenever the media tries, whenever, uh, you know, Trip Eisen decides to, you know, go, I'm like, remember me, remember me, remember me. And I think at one point uh, you just commented under it. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, God, I'm crying. I love it. But if you could, I'm, I was going to be joined by a, uh, by a colleague and an old friend of mine, but I don't know if he's going to make it. So he's a video game journal. And okay. I have a feeling that if he, um, since he's not going to get here, he'd probably want to ask, what games have you been? You're, you're quite a passionate gamer. What has been rocking your world lately? Yeah, I'm still stuck on playing Destiny 2. <laughs> they keep putting out expansions and they keep getting hooked. <laughs> although, <laughs> although, although the story in this last one is like really disappointing, but the gameplay and the new subclasses is still really, really fun and uh, addicting. So I still play the game. <laughs> I remember remarking that your uh, your office where we did the last interview had gaming peripherals hung up on the wall like a hunter would have rifles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, what were some of the... Going back to your childhood and your, your adolescence, what were some of the albums that kind of shaped you, do you think, as a... You know, what were some of those formative ones for you? Uh... I would say uh, uh, Speak English or Die from SOD was huge for me. Uh, the first DRI album, uh, the first Cryptic Slaughter record, Convicted. Uh, uh, Slayer, Hello Waits was big for me. Um, yeah, I, I think those. It's a good starting point right there. <laughs> Going back, so Static X a lot of the time gets lumped in with the uh, with the new metal scene that was coming up at the time. Was that label ever comfortable with you? How would you kind of classify Static X? I mean, yeah, we we did we did emerge in that scene, uh, but to me, like that new metal label. Uh, for better or for worse, uh, for me, it, uh, it it was always associated with with that rap rock kind of thing, you know, with, with the hip hop influence, and uh, you know, none of us were big hip hop fans, and that didn't really make uh, make it into the Static X sound. So, you know, for us, it was kind of like we got lumped in to that category. Um, but I don't know that we were necessarily uh, in, in that category. I mean, we were more, we were, you know, trying to rip off ministry and prong. <laughs> you know, we, we, we just, we just wanted to be, you know, more in, industrial. Uh, if, uh, or uh, like the, the other thing that, really influenced us was uh that whole electronica movement that was happening at that time you know the the chemical brothers uh you know a prodigy those those kind of acts were, were big influences on us too particularly uh the soundtrack to the prong or the the prong the uh the spawn the spawn soundtrack that had those collaborations with electronica artists and and metal acts and rock acts that was a big influence on us too. That was one of the first albums I ever bought, and it I, um, it absolutely blew me away. I got to interview uh, the sole remaining uh, member of the Crystal Method. So they used to be a duo. Now now he's just yeah. one guy. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to him that it seems so quaint now, looking back on the late nineties. But as a kid, it, it felt like the future, like the internet was just coming out you know the sony playstation had just come out you know games are right. on cds now mm -hmm. like the matrix <laughs> you know yeah. like it, it the the like the turn of the century genuinely felt like we were just barreling into the future like i was 11 years old at the time what what was, do you remember of that period uh, what what do i remember about that period i mean like do you i, I don't know do you feel the same do you feel the same way, like the the turn of the century? What? Um, I mean, I, it it was 
definitely an important time for me and for for the band. I mean, it, it was like everything was just moving so fast for us, you know, and you, getting a record label, going out on our first tour, and then getting our first bus and being on Ozfest and, you know, playing these huge audiences. So, yeah, it was a, a really fast moving time for us. Yeah. If you have, as someone who has <clears throat> played with a lot of my idols, I wonder if you could, I mean, you've already been part of bands that could be considered super groups by any, any definition. If you were to build one, like let's say, I don't know, four or five members, if you could build a super group, what would you, what would you call it? The, who would you pick? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Um, so James Hetfield for rhythm guitar. Um, uh, see so Dave Lombardo on drums. Nice. Uh, me on bass because I ain't gonna let anybody else <laughs> jam with my heroes. Uh, and uh, for leads, uh, uh, well, if he was still alive, I'd get Randy Rhodes, but he's not alive. Uh, or, or Dimebag, that would be great too. Mm. Um, uh, all right, John Five, he's a great lead guitar player. Uh, and I've jammed with him before. He's uh, well, he's uh, he's recorded <laughs> yeah. records. So uh, yeah, we get John Five on leads, and uh, yeah, I think that rounds it out. Yeah, you toured with Pantera in the early days. Is that right? I wouldn't say the early days. Uh, we did uh, Extreme Steel tour with them i think it was 2000 2001 yeah yeah 2001 and then uh that ostracist in 2000 they were on the on the headline stage what was that experience like what were they like backstage uh, really cool man uh i remember on that first ostracist or, or that ostracist we did with them um um rex and and vinny invited me up on their bus one one day to hang out and they were like playing this gambling game and I won a hundred bucks off of Rex. <laughs> He's like, all right, but you gotta come back. Let me let me uh win that I'll win that back from you. And, uh, I don't I don't think I ever did. So <laughs> I still own the game, I guess. I remember I think it was Terry Date was saying that he they asked him to do another out, you know because he was their producer for a long time, they asked him to do another one. He's like, dude, I'm not doing it. My liver just cannot keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, oddly enough, uh, during that Ozfest, I was going through a sober phase. <laughs> and I didn't touch a drink of liquor. Uh, so, yeah, I, I didn't drink anything with those guys. Uh, but when we did Extreme Steel, I was over that phase, and I was like, yeah, let's go. Come on. <laughs> I'm wondering if they ever do, if they ever finally release, you know, volume four of the home videos, you're going to, do you remember a handy cam being thrown? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, they got all kinds of footage, man. Mm. So, ah, we have, hang on one second, mate. Oh, my mate has shown up. He is just appearing here. He's just connecting to audio now. I think he would have seen you by now and he's currently giddy. Because he and I were both absolutely massive fans of you um, uh, in our high school years. Now, he is just appearing now. His name's Ash. Wow. There he is. Good morning, Legends. How are we doing? Hey, what's up, man? Tony Campos, the man himself. How are you going, my man? No, I'm all right. Is he now, busy? <laughs> yeah, sure. Hanging out with my father there. Right? Now, so, um, Ash, just to catch you up, so we um, we did bro uh, broach gaming uh, quickly, and he was saying that he was a big fan of Destiny 2. Oh, really? nice. Yeah, excellent. You've been playing the new stuff, the real good neon stuff? Yeah, yeah. 
not, not as much as I'd like to because I'm busy with like real world stuff, but <laughs> no, isn't that just always the way? It's hard. Yeah. yeah. Tom, mm-hmm. Tom's the music journalist. I'm the gaming journalist. So that's my yeah, loose right. connection. Do you happen to have that painting near- nearby? Nearby? I do actually. I do. Give me a sec. Tony, have a look at this. Just wait one second. This is a uh, proof positive of how good a, uh, well, how uh, huge fans we were. He is about to reappear with something that I gifted him for, I believe it was his 18th birthday. Hang on one second. There you go. The- <laughs> no, look at that. That was, yes, huge fans. No. Did, you, did you date it? No, but it's a long time ago. That was. It, we're, <laughs> we're old. Everyone's getting old. Yeah, yeah. that's how life is. Yeah, happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, with this wrap up, did you, uh, are you able to bring any game consoles or anything on tour with you? Um, for like overseas, I'll have a laptop. Um, domestic tours, I, uh, I, I have a small portable gaming PC that I have in a little Pelican case. Oh, thank God. These are the importance. Um, <laughs> Ash, we are actually bang on our time allocation at 820. Uh, Mate, that is totally cool. I'm just happy to say, you know, Tony, massive fan. Look forward to seeing you. I'm actually going to be at the show in Melbourne next week. So uh, right on now. Absolutely yeah, going to be killing it. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, man, easy. We are, and I'll be seeing you in Brisbane. Tony, thank you so much for your time today, man. All right, Truly man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, man. See you soon. All right, see you guys. Have a good Bye. one.